During a hurricane, residents with special needs, the elderly, and those without transportation require extra attention in order to stay safe during the disaster. Polk County has programs in place to help these residents prepare for and find safe shelter. Coming up on Polk Place, we'll talk about special needs shelters. Make sure you stick around. Hello, I'm your host, Tricia Pichette, and with me today is Tammy Durden, Director of Nursing at uh, Florida Department of Health in Polk <laughs> County. Yes. So let's talk about shelters. Um, we'll start with what is a special needs shelter? Okay, a special needs shelter is some place where our residents can go to shelter who may be electrically dependent on something or they have some kind of a medical condition that they need some help, some kind of need that we can you know, satisfy um, in, over there instead of going to a general population shelter. Okay, so um, who would be who would be a candidate for a special needs shelter? What, okay. What kind of... Okay, a lot of people think elderly, and of course a lot of our older folks do come, but don't forget um, we have a lot of different ages who have special needs, um, including babies. So oh. anybody that is electrically dependent on something, uh, maybe an oxygen concentrator, or they need um, to sleep with CPAP at night, or they take nebulizer treatments. Um, we have babies that are on feeding tubes. Um, kids with um, cystic fibrosis may use a chest on physical therapy. Mm -hmm. And then we have folks that maybe just need help with their diabetes. They have to take insulin shots or they need help with medications. Um, some come in, they have wounds that need dressing changes. Okay. Sometimes they're just very frail and um, sometimes we have memory disorders, dementia patients. Mm -hmm. So All anybody right. who cannot get care in a general population shelter would go to a special needs shelter. Okay, and for, for what kind of event would, would Polk County open? A special okay. needs shelter. Well, of course, everybody thinks hurricanes. Um, that is our, you know, our, our one of our main reasons we would open. But don't forget, we could have tornadoes come through. We could have vast flooding. Um, it doesn't mean that something that you know affects the whole county it can be a certain part of the county. Mm -hmm. um, a couple years ago, there was a fire in one of our um, ALFs, so we didn't know if we would have to open for them. But fortunately, they were able to go to a sister company. So it would be any kind of natural or man-made disaster where people would need shelter. Okay. Um, can you, is there a system where you could pre-register for a shelter and why would yes, you? Yes, absolutely. And we encourage people to pre-register if that's possible. They can call county management and I can give you that number. Okay. That number is 863-298-7027. Okay. And you can pre-register and let us know your needs. If, um, do you need an electrical outlet? Um, you know, do you have some kind of medical condition that we need to help you with? Are you going to need oxygen tanks so we can make sure we have enough supplies? And then another thing is we can arrange for transportation for you. Ah. Mm -hmm. So if, if I pre-register, um, are, are, are you going to call me if there's a problem? Yes, um, what county management does, every year we do a call down, and I think that is just that just occurred actually. Huh. They will call everybody on the list to see, has their needs changed? Have they moved? Are they no longer in Polk County? Um, maybe they're now in an assisted living facility. Unfortunately, some folks have passed away. So we know to take those people off our list, or maybe they did come, but now their situation has changed and now they do need transportation, or maybe they don't. So things can change. Oh. So we try to get the most up-to-date um, information we can. We um, will pre-register so that when you do come, we don't have to take that time at that, you know, take the time then to pre-register you. It just goes a little faster. Okay. But now, if you don't pre-register, you are still welcome to come, of course. So um, I come to a special needs shelter. Uh, is there anything I, I should bring with me? Yes, bring your supplies that you would need. So if you are on an oxygen concentrator, bring your concentrator, okay? If you do have some oxygen tanks, you're welcome to bring them. We would appreciate that. We do get some and we have them at our shelters also because you know, oxygen tanks run dry. Um, if you um, maybe have a wound and you have dressing supplies, you know, bring those. Also, know that um, special needs shelters aren't the most comfortable place. You know, we have cots. Um, there's a lot of people crammed in there. So know that you're going to be on a cot. So if you have a, a pillow or some blankets that you want to bring, bring those. Because our pillows are flat. It's not very comfortable. We like to tell people that 
going to a special needs shelter is really a last resort. If you can shelter with, you know, family, friends, that's really more comfortable and better for you if, um, you know, if that's possible. But if not, bring what you need and bring maybe some snacks. If you're a diabetic or you have special dietary needs, you know, make sure you bring something like that also. We do have food and we do give you three meals a day, um, but we don't have a lot of snacks and a lot of, you know, extras. Mm. So make sure you bring what you need. Now, if, if uh, someone is at, at home and normally has a caregiver, mm -hmm. does their caregiver come with them? Can they come with yes, them? Yes, and we encourage that. So um, if you have somebody and you are a caregiver, please, you come with them and you can continue what you do for them at the shelter. Also, if you have home health, and home health maybe comes to your home three times a week, maybe they're you know changing a wound or they're doing some other kind of service for you, we encourage them and want them to come to the special needs shelter so they can continue those services there. Now, um, we have general shelters in Polk County. We have pet-friendly shelters in Polk County. Yes. Um, are the special needs shelters pet-friendly? No. There was a, um, a push in legislation this year to see if that would pass, but it did not. Um, special needs shelters are not pet shelters. The only animals that are allowed in there are service animals. Okay. And for the state of Florida, a service animal is either a dog or a miniature horse. And those animals provide a very specific service for those folks. So those are the only ones allowed. So unfortunately, pets, um, emotional support animals, comfort animals, they're just not allowed. And I know that's very hard on, um, on our clients. Mm -hmm. And so what I can really recommend is please make those arrangements ahead of time. You know, it's getting into hurricane season now. So if you do have a pet and you are pre-registered, you know, think, what am I going to do with my pet? You know, maybe you have a bird. You know, maybe you have a cat. You know, who's going to take care of your animals? Where can you shelter them? So if you make arrangements ahead of time, so when the time does come, you already have a plan in place. Where are the special needs? shelters. Okay, that's a Polk good County. question. We have three of them. We have one in Lakeland, that's the McKill Academy of Technology. It's a school. It's our smallest um, shelter and we shelter about 240 people there. Then we moved to Bartow and um, on the health department campus we have our specialty care clinic and we shelter folks there and we can shelter 409. And then we moved to the east side of the county to Ridge Community High School and that's located in Davenport and that is our largest shelter and we can shelter 640 and we can even probably go up higher if we utilize another building. Okay. Now, it, if it's okay with you, I'm gonna I'm gonna go back for a minute. Sure. So I I show up at the shelter. Okay. I have um, some snacks, a pillow, a blanket. Mm -hmm. um, what about my medications? Okay. Should I be bringing yes. those? Yes, yes, you definitely need to bring your medications because we do not have medications. So bring your medications. And another thing, if you see that you're maybe running out, that you don't have a good couple weeks supply, go ahead and get that supply now. Um, during um, Hurricane Irma, a lot of people was running out of their medication. So we were calling pharmacies and we were trying to get people more you know, medications. Um, but if you're prepared, you know, you have it and you don't have to worry. Okay, now I, I'm assuming that um, it's also important to kind of keep yourself amused or busy. Yes. Right? <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely. <laughs> Not a lot of activity going on there. But what we recommend, bring books, bring puzzles, you know, crossword books. If you um, knit, we had a lot of little ladies bring knitting and cross stitching. Nice. Um, and a lot of times they just like to talk too. But yes, it's, days are long. Bring a deck of cards. Um, we do have um, a couple of TVs. The schools really don't have that capability, mm. so we can't have TVs there. But in Bartow, we had some TVs, and we would have um, you know movies playing when you know when we could. Nice. Okay. Mm. So um, as preparation going into hurricane season, what should people be doing now? Just the thirty thousand foot view. What should be on your radar? What should you be doing? Is this for special needs shelters? Yes. Okay. If you are thinking that this is something that going to apply to you, please pre-register. Okay. That is the easiest thing and the, you know, the best thing you can do. And start thinking about getting those extra medications, making sure that you make arrangements for your pets if you have them, and letting your family know that, especially, we have a lot of people that have family out of state, uh -huh. and they're very worried about you know, their family members. So let them know, yes, I've registered, and I'm gonna be going to a shelter, and these are the three names. So we had a lot of families calling and checking on their loved ones.
So having said that, if, if you also have a cell phone, your cell phone would be a good thing to bring too, yes, right? Yes, bring your cell phone, absolutely, and bring your charger. Um, okay. Unfortunately, though, we don't know if cell phone towers may go down. So True. Mm -hmm. But yes, bring them and, um, and your chargers. Well, this has been very interesting. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Hurricane season is here, and it's time to prepare and start thinking about how Florida residents can be prepared. One of the ways some can prepare is by knowing about their local special needs shelters. If you or someone in your family requires daily medical assistance, help with medication, oxygen therapy, or electricity for life-supporting medical equipment, a special needs shelter may be an option for you during a storm or any other type of disaster. The time to prepare is now. Be sure to pre-register for a special needs shelter and if you are in need of assistance during a storm. For more information, you can contact the Florida Department of Health in Polk County at 863-519-7900 or look them up on the web at www.polk.floridahealth.gov.